Our old bathroom floor tile is circa 1991. And as part of our DIY master bath remodel, that tile has got to go. Right now you're gonna see how I demo this tile. <laughs> how I prepare for the new tile. We are pretty square down here. And then how I install this gorgeous four tile floral pattern. It's got tons of character and we love how it turned out. If you haven't seen the videos of the install of this huge soaking master bath tub or this niche, which we are now affectionately called the nookie, check those videos out linked here. And before you say anything, I know, I know. The mustache is gone. Whatever, whatever. I don't miss it. I'm not angry. Hammer that like button and let's get rocking. Okay, this is how it's coming out today. Vacuum's ready to shoot that dust right out of that window. I pulled the screen out. I put a little half pallet there so I can set out all the tile boxes when they're full of old tile. Of course, I've got to pull the toilet out of the throne room. The face trim will come out. <laughs> Of course, I'm not going to keep the red on the wall. By the time you see the finished floor product, that red's gone. <laughs> Nobody in the world thinks this is fun. When you're taking off the base trim, you want to score the top to cut through the caulking or any paint that was holding it together before. So I got this entryway taped up, plasticed off, all the way down to the hardwood. Hardwood's covered. The only way out until this tile is done is through that window. Superman style. Now I opted to go for the mini sledge here because I wanted to break it up into little pieces, get as much out of those boxes as I possibly could. There are times when I, you'll see, I use the chisel right here, which is a very helpful tool to get under the tiles and pick them up pieces at a time if they come off of the thin set that easily. This serious business, sweat dripping everywhere. It's important to put something down into the drain, just stuff something down in there, like this rag. I'm gonna be doing all this work, chipping up all this tile, and we don't want that all to go down into your drain. Ultimately, I did find the chisel to be the most helpful and quickest way to get this tile up off the floor. Now, don't underestimate how much dust you're gonna create in this process. I'm gonna get back on this uh, Herzo shroud with the masonry cup grinder from the bottom of this thing hooked up to the angle grinder got the uh, wet dry vac gaff taped onto the end of this thing i'm gonna fire away and start in the throne room here and just see how this thing rips up this old mortar the grinding cup did work well but only if the thin set was very minimal you'll see there where it started to smoke out on me the adapter for the vacuum hose actually got sucked into the hose and backing it up tried the grinder on all of that mortar no go three eight inches thick so it's massively dense so it was throwing up a lot more dust in the air than i thought it was going to and it was taking a long time to get dig through it i think that is a good tool to use for the last go over on the foundation to make sure it's smooth otherwise i just can't do that whole thing then i shifted over to the chisel and the hammer the trouble with that there's just too much of that to get up Home Depot rental. I got this angular chisel, I got this locked into place, and all it does is it just sits there and just hammers this stuff in and out. Couple of things I picked up when I got my rental of my tile saw. This rubbing stone, it's two sided, 60 on one side, 80 on the other. That's to get those cut edges looking like it's more factory trim. These eighth inch spacers, and this I got off Amazon. Clips, eighth inch leveling system. You've seen these before, I'm sure. You're gonna see them really soon. Goes under each top and bottom tile, left and right. Use this bad boy here to clamp it down in tight. Gets rid of all the lipping. Get ready for some wild floor tile. Bam. 
eight inch square, a little bit of a floral pattern. Put four of them together, they make one piece. This is the tile that I'm using. At the time of this purchase, it was 99 cents per eight inch square tile. This particular tile is purchased at Lowe's, that's the item number. What I'm doing now is I'm looking into how far over. I would like to put one full piece of tile right there on the edge of the tub. However, that would leave me a sliver right here at my hardwood. I measured up one at a time from underneath where the toe kick is. And that leaves us that much to fill into the tub. And I like that idea. And it also uses three quarters of the tile to fill into the hardwood. And I'm fine with that too. I mean, we are getting lucky here. We're, we're almost square there. And that's really nice. And we are pretty square down here, which is really nice. I'm gonna dry fit, just lay some tile out from this wall into the throne room and see how that's gonna look. I'm fine with that layout and how it goes around the toilet, how it sits inside of the room. I will find my starting point, which is probably gonna be in that corner down there. It is really square. I'm gonna do a quick layout. I'll pull all this tile out, get another sweep, sponge it down. Feeling pretty good about that square right there on that toe kick. So I'm dry fitting this with tabs all the way down. Floor pattern set up as it should do. All the way over here. This one's not set up yet. Like this. Now I'm gonna adjust my line to live like that. I'm gonna push this over to come off that line. That's gonna be all my line across. And the rest of the room is gonna be built off that. Since we're dealing with four different tiles to make up one full pattern, I put that anchor set right there in the corner when I knew it would work. Sliding all that over, I was able to put a sliver pattern just at the wall, not interrupting a full four pattern tile. After a quick wet dry vac on the floor, you want to lay out all your tile to make sure the pattern is fitting to your eye and where you're going to want it and make sure you have enough tile. Now we end up with roughly the same amount of space on this side as we do on that side. Now if I placed my full tile on the walk-in right there, I would have had a sliver by the top, which I didn't want. So my idea was to shift it all over to that side and see what it looked like on this side. And I was happy with the results. About three quarters of tile on this side and as it moves around, about three quarters of the tile against the tub. Because these are essentially 16 inch square tiles broken up into eight inch tiles, you can't shift it over and split the sliver on this side and that side. You have to choose one or another. Otherwise, the cut and the floor will not match up. I'm gonna deal with having two inches on that side and roughly two to four inches on that side. And I'm happy with that. And because I've gotten square with that toe kick, Everything seems to be lining up pretty nicely. Back here behind the throne. Everything I get has to be a fresh piece to fit the floral pattern on the outside. And it looks like it's gonna be roughly two to three inches all the way around. Boom. I'm not worried about spacing or alignment right now because I know I've got my pattern lined up and that'll work. And now these get filled with full tiles and I'm gonna be using a grinder to cut that, the grinder wheel to cut that flange out for the toilet. I'm gonna to be able to use the back side of this cut tile to fit into some of these areas right there. So I'll be able to use the other side of them. Find myself a corner piece, trim that down, Bob's your uncle. I found a cut piece, always look for cut pieces. I'm gonna mark it up, cut it, slap it in there. Then I can take this cutter back. Got the tile saw taken back to the uh, rental. That is a sigh of relief because, man, I hate being on the clock for something that's costing me money every day. I'd rather have something that was gonna, I could have bought, probably could have sold it afterwards, a tile saw, but I really love that machine. It was a beast. It was like professional grade, largest it come by. And when you're cutting these larger tiles, that's what you're gonna need anyway. Something that can fit that underneath there. Fence is really nice and tight. So everything worked out well with the rental but it's gone now out of my life. These are cut, gonna lay these back in. Once I cut that right there to fit around the toilet flange, 
I will be ready to start pulling these off and putting them in with thin set. You see, I've got to get up about a quarter of an inch right here to match the hardwood. And I think I'm going to use my leveling system with the tabs, get under that hardwood and cramp it down to fit the level of that hardwood. Right here has gone farther over than this corner. And I thought it was maybe this piece that was pushing it over because now my joint is off right here. And this is why I'm dry fitting. So that can only mean one of two things. Either these spacers are wrong, doubtful, or there's a mole in the CIA. I tried to get this one, swapped it out, didn't make any difference. I think, however, it's this one. See, that one's a little bit shorter than the other one. So the all tiles are not made equal. Maybe I'll just slap the grout on this thing and call it a day. Nah. So I've got all this laid out. I've got a cut to fit in. And if you remember, I had cut it all out because I had to get the rental of the wet saw back. Now I can cut a lot of this, trim it with the grinder and the diamond blade if I need to, and I will need to around the flange of the toilet. What I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna have to make sure that I've got all of this so that I know where it goes, when it needs to go in. Important to do this so that, I'm gonna leave the cut into the side, turn it, and we'll call this one. It's important to do this because all of these patterns have to match up and the things that I cut here need to go in the exact same spot. Two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. On the tub side, I'm gonna go from this way, right to left, just like I did on the wall there, but I'm gonna call these T1, T2, T3, Three, T4, T5, T6, T7. I'm gonna label these for my entry. So I'm gonna call it E1. One. One, E1, one, E2, E3, E4, E5. That'll be pretty obvious. R for right side. I'm gonna say R1, R2, R3, R4. In order to keep me honest here, I'm gonna say thrown front. Thrown left TF one TF two TF three TF four TF five LTL. There's obviously no good way to do this. It's just what's gonna make you get the job done. Three TL four TL five TL six seven eight L nine TB1, 2, TB matching. These over here I don't need to mark because they are full tough. This here, I'm gonna have to cut these out for my flange and I'll do that as I'm putting them in. Really clean workstation. So now I'm gonna take all of these out because it doesn't matter really which ones I use. I just have to make sure that I put the right ones in first over here and then I build off the pattern from there. Handy rolling cart here. All my cut pieces are on top here so I can easily find them. Now that I got all the tile out, I'm gonna go back through with my five and one and I'm gonna find any undulating areas, any bumps, any wiggly jigglies that's gonna throw my tile off. However, having it tiled down on the floor and being able to walk on it, you can really find areas where it starts getting shaky. No noise is good. The five in one tool, love it. It's got many, many uses. Getting rid of thin set on your floor is one of those. I'm just gonna use an older sponge meant for tile, so I don't care if it gets all messed up. I'm certainly not gonna use it for the top of the tile again. Get all that old dust up. I'm gonna lay this, dry fit this back down here so that it tells me how far off the wall I need to be over here. And then I'm gonna start laying this way. I'm gonna work my way back down that way. Not very scientific here, but I'm going to count to 12. You want to find the mixture that's right here. For me, it's just like a little bit of thin peanut butter. So I've done it a few times. That's why I just sort of eyeballed the water and add a little bit more powder in there. So when you get it right, you know you got it right. spacers in. I got these tiles laid up. What I've done now is I've dry fit my front line 
all the way around so that I know my spacing. So I can come off that far off the wall. And this is gonna have base trim. So I've got a little bit of insurance here against the wall. Now I can feel confident that with this line set up and my front line spaced properly all the way down, I can start pulling these and just putting this line in. I'm gonna bank in this line and then patch in backside to the wall there. So now I'm setting my thin set down all the way up to the line I just scribed to keep me honest and level. Some people say that maybe you should only go the same way with the trowel. Um, I think I went left to right here and when eventually got down the line I started going up and down. These are our flat layouts. First we're going to butter it. Get this off of the tub. Nine. So it's not squeezing up on my tub. It's always really excited to get the first tile lit and then set. Here we go. As long as we're on our line, we'll be good. Put our tabs in. You always want to make sure you back butter the tiles because that creates a better bond between the tile and the mortar that you have on the floor. And you'll see there that I always use my finger and I just rub off the thin set that's just on the side of the tile that's been laid in. That's to keep from squeezing that thin set in between the tiles and drying there. You'll see later on that I did have to do some work going back and removing that, leaving room for the grout that was going to go in. And as we move through these tiles, we're putting these tabs in underneath both sides of the tile in the center. I chose to use just one per side and then the wedges go in and you use the set of pliers that come with it. What it does, it brings one up to meet the level of the other one so that you don't have any lippings. So you're not catching any toes on a piece of tile that's sticking up higher than the other one. As I'm going through, because I set my previous tiles along the tub line, that's now locking down the floral pattern that's sitting on the floor. So I have to build off that. When you're working with these floral patterns, especially when you have multiple tiles that match together to make one larger platform, like these eight inch, four of them together equal 16 inch square images. You have to make sure that you're turning those and setting them down in the proper way. Also, you have to make sure that what you cut for the sides are getting down in their proper place as well, because they're not all gonna be cut the same size. I did discover that when you use these wedges and you crank them down, it tends to shift your tile a little bit. So once they are cranked down, you do want to shift them and push them back a little bit where you need to be set and keep on your line. Sometimes the grout lines and the joints would get misaligned a little bit by the wedges, especially if you had a little bit of room on the ends, it's gonna take up that room when you crank down the wedges. So just move things back and it's still wet, it's fine, you have plenty of time to do it. Just move it back where you need it. You also wanna pay attention when you are putting down the thin set that you're putting it thick enough to when you trowel it when you're quarter inch, you do have ridges tall enough to be collapsed when you push down your buttered tile on it because that's what really is going to create the bond between your floor and the tile. It's got to be buttered and it's got to knock down those ridges and create that sort of vacuum underneath the tile that allows the thin set to dry in a hard way underneath your tile. When you're getting that sharp trowel next to your brand new tub, you want to be sure that you don't scratch the tub with the trowel because it will gouge the acrylic off the side of that skirt. So just be careful that you're going slow. No reason to rush this process. Only put down enough mortar on the floor that you feel comfortable with. Now I'm using these eighth inch clips and wedges system, but I'm also using eighth inch tabs that I use as spacers on the left and right just to keep myself honest. And I found that really helped with keeping me square 
with the other tiles laid down. Plus they're really cheap. They're a couple bucks a bag for a hundred or two hundred of them. And you can reuse those. So I use those during the dry fit, picked them up uh, when I swept up, put them back into the bag. And then I had them here for the actual tiling process. And these clips you'll notice when you'll see later on, once they dry, the bottom part stays under the tile in the thin set. The top part just gets hammered off and breaks right off super easy when you go sideways on it because they're very weak sideways, but they're strong north to south. But they tap right out when they're dry left to right. I want to also point out that when I installed this tile, I did it in sections. Matter of fact, over days. So I was allowing it to dry on one side, and then I can crack off the wedges and reuse those. I did buy extra tabs during the process because I found that I was running out. But it also allowed me to be able to step on the far side that was already dry when I had to reach tough spaces. And when you do that, if you leave it to dry, you just want to scrape off any thin set off the foundation so it doesn't dry with ridges, leaving you with a problem to clean up later on. I also would leave tabs underneath the tiles I knew were, that were going to dry so I could still use my spacing system. I got to say, it was really fun putting in this floral pattern tile that worked together as four full pieces to make one image because it was kind of like putting together a jigsaw puzzle. You had to make sure that each piece was going where it was supposed to go. There were a couple of times where I wasn't paying attention. I was just in the zone. I was vibing and I just put the tile in the wrong way. So I had to pull it back up, rebutter it, re trowel it and put it back in and make sure that it was level. But for the most part, once you get the system together and you know you've set up your floral pattern on a line and you know where it is and you're square to a wall, as long as you're paying attention, you're gonna put the tile in the right way and you're gonna have a really beautiful floor. This was a bold move to put this tile in. We were really excited about it. We think it turned out really well. Leave your comments down below how you think this tile turned out and if you'd use something like this. And if this has been useful for you, do me a favor and hit that subscribe button. Pop that notification bell so that you know when I get new videos up. It's really helpful. And if you're a homeowner and you're into do-it-yourself, this channel is going to be right for you. Need help growing it. To do a last quick sweep before you get going. Look at all this. It would end up back in my mortar bucket. I'm going to want to keep my, my line from right here all the way down. So I'm going to dry fit this line all the way down. I want to start down there, work my way up to this back, and I want to finish right here. Because this I know is already set and I can stand on it. It's fine. So I've got my line across there. I'm going to scribe that, pull these out. I'm going to make a mark up the wall as well a little bit so that I can remember exactly where it's at. And then I'll pull those, start laying down. It's really helpful to use a square in this circumstance when you're dry fitting and you're going to create a line to work off of. Like that black line down there is very helpful. You don't want to cover that up with thin set. So I've got my dry fit all the way down to make sure my pattern is correct coming back in from the bathroom into the throne room. And once I did that, I knew exactly what tiles to lay down in the back end of the throne room so I wasn't guessing. If you lay it out, no guesswork, you just get to work. This is also where I started using the tiles that I would labeled. Right there, TB1 through 5 got me right to work. I eyeball this because it's going to be covered by the toilet. Just have to draw a circle in this thing and hope that it's big enough. Not a bad circle actually. This needs to go a little wider. 
just for safety's sake. I'm just going to cut the outside of the line here. I need to have these done if I can move on. Let's do it. Obviously wearing ear protection, eye protection, and a mask over your mouth because that's really dusty, but doggone that's fun. You'll notice that when I get into putting these tiles around the flange that the really thin parts, I don't want to put any wedge and tab system on that because you could break the tile. Um, you, you don't want to end up having to cut another one of those again. although. To do that while it's wet, it's fine to pull it up, you have to redo it, whatever. But you'll see there's not a wedge anywhere where the tile is too thin. And if it was in there, I didn't apply too much pressure to crank it down. I don't know what happened, but I did end up with a tiny bit of lippage right where you don't want it, which is where the toilet sits down on it. I ended up having to put a little bit of a wedge underneath the front part of the toilet to support it to keep it from rocking on the floor. I had to pause because I had a tea time and daddy had to go golfing. I did all right. But now I'm back at it with this small portion here to finish up. Because it's small, I went with a smaller bucket. I still have my line right here to work off of. And this is all pretty square. I'm gonna rock and roll. I'm just gonna dump this on here, really. Let's get some mud on here. Now this mud was a little bit thinner than the previous batches, but I planned to put a little bit more down so it was going to be wet a lot longer. I could do more work. And I started getting really excited because this is the end of actually putting the tile in, which is kind of the toughest part of the job, I think, outside of the demolition and scraping all that stuff off the floor. But getting it done, getting it done right where you're happy with it, this is why we are the do-it-yourselfers. This is why we do this stuff. If you can save a bundle of money, I mean, the equity on, the added equity on the house by doing this myself, just having it done is extraordinary. Thousands of dollars. If you're still watching this and you're enjoying it, you haven't hit that like button yet, honestly, I, I don't know what you're doing. What are you about? Come on, like this video for me, subscribe. Do me a favor and help me grow this thing. I'm going to be posting more videos about how I do the entire master bath from the bathtub, everything. Now I'm hitting these on the thin side and they crack right off. If you're using a black rubber mallet, put a little masking tape on the side where you're hammering with or you'll mark up your tile. This is what we're looking for, this squeeze out right here. Take the five and one, you want to be careful not to obviously chip the edge of the tile. So I'm going really light here. I'm going to get it to the point where it makes it easy for the grout tool to do the rest of the work. A lot of this is just on the outside. Any part of the tile that's the enamel on the tile is going to actually clean right off of there. That's just this little tool right here. It's got that sort of diamond edge shredder on the side of it. And I'm just gonna go lightly back and forth. You don't have to go all the way down to the ground. You just wanna to get to the point where you're happy with the, that the grout line's gonna be in there. That looks pretty good. Case in point, this will get a little chip right here. Now I did that with this, coming into this corner and I just had a little bit of a turn and it popped that corner right off, but it doesn't look too big. I think that the grout, when it goes over that, will blend that in nicely. I'll just keep it up high enough to where it doesn't matter. When you have it up in a corner like this, I find the five and one works pretty well. You just push down on it and it'll sort of powder out. Preferably, you're pulling or pushing away from the edges. You want to use the wet dry vac to get all those rocks out of the cracks so you have clean lines for your grout and give it a good scrub. Going with the Mapai charcoal here to match the 
dark elements of the tile instead of the white or any other color. And they have a lot of different colors to choose from. This charcoal is gonna match that tile pretty nice. When you're mixing, always start with the water in first and then add a little bit more as you go. I'm gonna start a throne room here. Knock this thing out, see how this charcoal goes. This is gonna be fun to sponge up. You want to use the float at a 45 degree angle to the tile and also a 45 degree angle on the grout line. Now I found that it's easier to push it down directly in and then wipe it through at a 45 both ways. Because this is so dark, I want to make sure I'm not missing any cracks or spots or anything that I should get. I already see one in the back there that I'm going to have to reach in and grab. Looks like I'm pretty full, but that little area right there, I want to grab. Be careful not to hit any of the. Now I decided to go with grout instead of caulking right up against the tub line. I just like the way it looks and I know I already have silicone underneath. I think that looks pretty good. We'll sponge that off, but I think that looks pretty good on the tub to tile line there. I put this glove on because this wood float started wearing on, this, on my hand and I felt a blister coming really fast. For me, better safe than sorry. I can still feel it through the glove, too. What a mess. Wow. <laughs> this is going to be a nasty battle. If you want to do dark grout, get ready to go to war. Now you should learn from my mistake and use two buckets, one clean water and one for the rinse of the sponge. There's the last bit here. At least that I can tell. That is most definitely going to crack. <laughs> you can see the floor pushes right here. But I gotta tell you though, even if I did use two buckets, I'd still be changing it off quite a bit. There was a ton of pigment in this grout and it was tough to get up and clean up. So we got wet charcoal grout down on the floor. It's gonna be, it's gonna be a nightmare to get it off uh, with buffing. I'm gonna let it dry now. It's the next day here and what I've done is I've taken an old flannel sheet that I had and I cut it up into a bunch of squares so that I can fold it up and ultimately have eight different sides to flip it around and use. Even then I went through probably 10 of these different rags and just tossed them out when I was done. You'd be surprised how much dust you actually collect in the room as well. You want to use a mask here and have a window open so that you don't asphyxiate yourself. Buffing is a great opportunity to use the rags to get into the grout line and clean up anything that's unsightly. Thanks for joining me on the journey to create our master bath. If you haven't yet seen the videos of the huge soaking tub or the nookie, check those out linked here. You guys, I don't have a certification for this stuff. I don't have some sort of superhuman power. What I have in order to get this stuff done at my house is the passion to work with my own hands and the patience to plan things properly. You can do this too. There's tons available to you to learn how to do this, including what I'm offering you on this channel. I really appreciate you hanging out and watching this. If you got something out of it, 
hammer that like button. If you haven't yet subscribed, do so now. Until next time, get working.